Hey guys, welcome back to another video by John Build It. If you want to learn how to build a head tracker for Flight Simulator, keep watching. Hey guys, for this project I used three red LEDs, one 82 ohm resistor, some 26 gauge copper wire, one 6 foot micro USB cable, a foam board, a hot glue gun, an exacto knife, a printed circuit board, some velcro tape, and a wire cutter. I designed my template in Adobe Illustrator and used my silhouette cutter to cut it out. A copy of the design is in the description below. If you do not have a silhouette cutter, then you may use a printer and some scissors. Then I cut two pieces of foam board, traced the design, and cut those out. Next I cut a small piece of printed circuit board to mount the resistor and the wires. The next step was to cut a groove in the foam board to put the printed circuit board, the wires and the LEDs. The next step was to solder the resistor to the circuit board. And the wires to the LEDs. The long leg of the LED is the positive and the short leg is the negative. I then soldered each LED to the printed circuit board. And finally the USB cable. Check out the link in the description for a document on how to connect all the wires. I then tested the LEDs to make sure that they were all connected correctly. Now it's time to insulate the legs of the LEDs with some hot glue. This prevents them from touching and shorting each other out and it also sticks the LEDs to the foam board. Now it's time to glue the two pieces together. Now that the head tracker is complete, it's time to build the head mount.
I use some Velcro tape for sticking the head tracker to my headphones. I find that Velcro tape is a lot easier to use and it allows me to remove the head tracker when I am not using it. And that's it for the build guys. Now let's move on to the software part of this project. I have added a link in the description below to the OpenTrack software. It is a free program that you can use to track your head movement. The current version as of recording this video is version 2.3.13. Okay guys, now it's time to head into Microsoft Flight Simulator to configure and test the head tracker. So here we are guys in the aircraft and I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how my head tracker, how the head tracker works. Um, so first things first, as you saw, you go to the website to get the OpenTrack software, install that software and open it up so mine's opened up and this is what it looks like there's a couple things here um, I'm not going to go very in-depth with this software there's other videos on YouTube that that teach you a lot more about this but just real quick my settings and how I've set mine up to work with the head tracker that I just built um, this profile here it starts with a default profile I just made a copy of the default profile and then I worked with that. So to create a copy, you just say create new copied config and you create a copy of the one of the default profile and I named it, you know, just Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and work from there. So on this left side, the only thing that you really need to be concerned with is the input on this side. So you click on the input and make sure your camera is selected. So whatever camera you're using, make sure that's selected over here and these settings should automatically populate. I did not really have to change anything in these settings. Um, if yours is not 75 hertz, you could change it to 75 hertz, but nevertheless, I didn't change anything in these settings. I left them just as they are. Over here in your camera settings, if you click on that, it will open up your camera properties. Yours might not have the same settings as mine if you're using a different camera. I'm using a Nexio says here next go n60 full HD camera so if you're using a different camera these might be different but I don't really mess with those my gain is at 15 it doesn't really do anything the the most important thing in here for me was the exposure so I turned the automatic exposure off and just brought the exposure slider all the way to the left over here point extraction set that to automatic and have the threshold at around the fourth tick mark. Set the minimum size to 2.5 pixels and the max size to 5 pixels and that's just how much light the camera is allowing or the program is allowing the camera to see from the head tracker. I'm using red LEDs so I selected red only for my color. Alright guys the next thing is over here in the point in on the input um, on the model if you click on model, there's some things that needs to be adjusted. So this is the head tracker and these are the distance between the LEDs. Okay, I have mine set like this because these are the actual measured distances between my LEDs. There is a template in the description below with um, that I use 
to create mine. Now the, the dimensions on my template is just slightly different. So in my default view is where my actual template is. So if I go into here and look at that, these are the measurements for the template. So if you're using the template that, that I put in the description below, if you can print it out and you know, cut it with some scissors or if you're using that exact template to build yours, then use these measurements for your template. Um, after you put your light bulbs in, you can measure them again and you might have to adjust these slightly. So mine is 30, 32, 74, and 70. And after I put the, the light bulbs in, I went into my new template and notice it's 28, 37, 77, and 70. So they changed just slightly. The next thing is the head calibration. This can only be done after the head tracker has started. So you start the head tracker and go into the input and on the model calibration, um, it says that to only use yaw and pitch while calibrating. So before you start the calibration, go into options and change your, your output sense or disable all the, all the outputs except for yaw and pitch. Then go back into your model, start calibration, click on start calibration, move your head up, down, left, and right and back to center and click on stop calibration and these numbers should adjust okay and over here and then once all that's done you can go into the mapping settings and control those next thing on here on the options there's a few options here that I've selected so the first thing for the control I've made a key binding controls plus zero so for my um, center position so if my head tracker is you know not acting right and I want to recenter it I hold down control and press enter or press zero sorry and that works it just recenters the, the headpiece the output I'm using my yaw my pitch and my X and my Z my head movement left and right my head movement up and down my body movement left and right, and my body movement forward and back, okay? Don't worry about that too much, but this does adjust, you know, if your center position is not perfectly centered and you want to move it, you can use those. And you can play around with those as need be. Next thing, relative translation, I don't have to do anything with that. And game detection, I didn't have to do anything with that. This option over here just allows you to start the game, start the program when the game starts. All right, key mappings. I will demonstrate that in just a second. So here we go. Click on start. And when it comes up, now you see the dots. So these are the red dots that my camera is picking up. Notice the background is completely dark because I have the exposure all the way down. Okay, get this out of the way. And before I show how I did everything else, just notice that everything works. So if I move my head to the left, the camera moves to the left. If I move to the right, the camera moves to the right. If I stop, it stops. If I look up, it looks up. If I turn my head while I'm looking up, it turns. If I look down and turn my head, it turns. Okay. If I move forward, I can zoom in forward. If I move back, I can zoom back. Okay. If I move to the left, I can move to the left and I've set it to where it will only move so far to the left simulating you know that I'm hitting the glass or the window if I move to the right I can move only so far to the right okay I can look to the left and move to the right a little bit so I can zoom in and see some of the controllers over here and you know that's that's the head tracker guys it works so on the mapping this is what I've done on my mapping for my yaw, left and right, I tweaked it. So when I move to the left, and you can, you know, pause the video and kind of look at the curves that I have if you want to set yours that way. But I, I put a little bit of curve to minimize the speed of how it's moving. So the camera does not move too fast when I turn my head. And then this side, I kind of adjusted it a little bit to, a, to, to move the camera where I want it. Now, if you grab on one of these dots and move them left and right, 
it will move the camera. Keep your head straight, it will move the camera where you want it, okay? If you right click on this dot, it will delete it. If you click on the line, it will add a dot, okay? Again, right click to delete, click to add a dot, and you can shift it wherever you want. I'm not moving my head, I'm just moving the dot, okay? It cancels so I can keep that mapping. Okay, so for the rest of them, the left, the pitch, again, up and down. This one is pretty linear, just up and down. The left and right, my body left and right, so moving my body to the left. Notice that straight line means that it doesn't do anything else after that. So it goes up and then it stops when I hit the window. To the right, it goes up and it stops once I get to the middle position or, you know, bumping into the seat on the right side. That's that. And for the Z position, forward and back, like that. So there's a button here that says asymmetric mapping. If I click on that, it gives me both options so I can independently tweak the left and right. For the zoom back and forward, I don't want to do independent. I just want it to bounce and go back. So that's why I did not tick that. Notice for here, I ticked it so because I want to control left and right independently, okay? When I move my body and my head up and down, I want to control that independently, and I want to control that left and right movement of my head independently. I want to control the left and right movement of my body independently. Okay, and um, that's it, guys. Other than that, everything else works. It works well in flight. I could also add a, a, a Y position, so while I'm flying, I can kind of duck a little bit to look out the window some more if I'm flying on an aircraft with a, the wing at the top and I want to see what my flaps are doing. So I might go ahead and add that in there. But it's, it's really easy to do, really, really easy to work with. If you guys have any questions or comments, just leave it down in the, in the comment box below. And um, that's it. You know, easy head tracker. You saw me build it, it was not a lot of work and it works. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. Goodbye.